Hello there. Uh, today we have a different topic. It's um, the use of an Asante Talk box to connect uh, to old 68K Max, uh, and Macintosh SE30 and a Macintosh 2SI to a modern no, more modern um, G4, which doesn't have local talk anymore, um, or the classic local talk, and this device is, um, connects local talk to Ethernet, and but permits to um, transfer local talk data from the old Macs to the new Mac, or to the newer Mac, um, and it seems to be a little bit uh, difficult and there are not many information and there are often problems that this doesn't work at first. So I try to explain what I did and how it looks like. So what we have here is the FE SE30. Um, it's coupled via um, uh, local talk phone wire device to the SE2SI which has the middle one. By the way, um, they must be properly um, terminated at the ends. Here you can see that with a resistor and this one puts it through, so they are daisy chained. And now we have the last one here, which uh, connects to the Asante talk box. And there we have a straight Ethernet cable, which plugs in to this TP-Link switch. And from this TP-Link switch we have a twisted yellow cable to this G4 Macintosh which uh, runs a Sonnet 1.4 GHz processor upgrade. And uh, here you can see they know each other, they found each other, and um, I show you here um, the Apple Talk and the TCP IP because I also have linked this TCP um, access point which connects to my internet Wi Fi network. So um, the Apple Talk shows a network number of 655516 and not 13, while the other two Macs, which I have to pass here, it's a different room, have a network number 65456 not 138 for the SI and uh, the 64656 uh, and not 1 for the uh, Macintosh SE30 so the at first that didn't work when I put all that together and um, then I read the manual of the Ascente which can be downloaded um, somewhere in the internet and um, there is a special procedure um, so that these computers can talk to each other. First step is you wire up the local talk network, the classic local, local talk network, put it in, in the Ascente box, but this 
must not be powered on at the moment. First, you have to start up all of the classic old devices and if they are started up you start Apple Talk at both machines. It has to be activated as you can see here. And then at the second step you plug in the wall adapter of your Ascenti Talk. And when after 10 seconds or so you may start the whole Ethernet assembly. They claim that if you don't do that in this uh, in this um, direction um, the Ascente local talk box won't be connect properly, properly uh, to the G4 via Ethernet because uh, they have to um, to negotiate uh, something and uh, if the box is switched on after the PC that won't work. So and what they also do claim and what I did is not to connect um, the internet device while you start it. So um, I, I linked the TP link um, access point at a later moment when all the Apple talk has started properly and the machine and the machines uh, talk to each other. So now I try to reproduce it and we will see if <laughs> If it doesn't, if it was not a one single success and what can be reproduced. Um, so, what you can see here, I have connected a Mac volume. This is uh, uh, which one is it? Ah, this is from the the uh, from the SE30. This is the second partition. The SE30 has a 4 GB SCSI disk in. Um, and this one here, uh, where is it? Ah, this one volume is from the Macintosh SI. Um, by the way, the Macintosh um, SI, 2SI runs uh, OS 7.6.1 uh, I think and the uh, SE30 runs 7.5.3 I think uh, and I have installed Open Transport which is uh, installed uh, automatically at 7.6 um, OS but you have to do it manually or afterwards at 7.5.3. I don't know if that makes any difference, but uh, this is the setup which worked for me. So another uh, thing when I did it first, I, I did not know uh, about the sequence of starting up. This might have been a problem why it didn't work for me the first time I did this setup. And the second thing um, is I changed um, the gray cable to the yellow cable connecting the um, G4 to the switch. Um, and probably this yellow cable is a twisted cable. I, I didn't check that at the moment. But um, as I said, the center manual claims that it has to be a twisted um, cable when you connect the PC either directly to the uh, Ascente box without a switch or you have to use the twisted cable um, to connect the G4 to the switch 
and you have to use this then you have to use a straight cable from the switch to the assembly box so and when I did that that worked suddenly <laughs> so I will switch off everything and then we can try to switch it on in the right order and see what happens so let's start up the SC30 first and now second the 2SI So, and we'll come back when they have started up. So now both machines have started up and I show it here because it does not flicker as much as on the CRT. Um, when we go to the control panels and click Apple Talk, um, this shows us uh, the zones. It has network zone 0 at the moment and not 138. And the SE30, let's have a look. It's not as easy. Apple Talk. We have not one and also network number zero. So when we now switch to the chooser, you can see here the different models of the uh, printer drivers, and here is Apple Share. And if we um, select that. We will see the Macintosh SE30 at one side and we do this again here on the SE30 and we should see the Macintosh SI. Okay, so if you want you can connect the Macintosh SI. Now um, what you do what you have to do first um, is to to give permission uh, to a drive to be remote controlled and uh, you choose it and then here in the finder menu there is uh, I don't know how it's called in English uh, it's using together or something like this and if you click it um, then you can uh, say you click it on and then uh, remote access is permitted and this is uh, that all subsequent uh, files are also accessible. So then you have to save it and it asks if it shall the rights shall be expanded to the subsequent files and it's okay. So you can access the complete hard drive from the other machine. So it takes a minute. Okay, it still works, but we can have a look on the SC30. And if we say access the Macintosh 2SI, we can do that. Um, we have to register 
and you has, have to give a password pass, um, password and then you here you will see the um, remote accessible volume oh, no no it's ready you see and uh, you can mark it here and you, then you can oops uh, you can mark it here and then you can save name and password and say OK. Um, and then after a few seconds you see here they are talking to each other. It should be accessible. See, and here you can do this vice versa. It's the SE30, and you click, and I have the same register, password, so that this is standard stuff. You see here the two volumes of the SE30 and we'll mark them uh, and it has to be done again because it has to update something which I don't know what it was but if you had the warning then do it a second time and it will work. So here you see volume 2 and the volume 1 from the SE30. So, we still have Apple Talk here and we go back to the chooser and we, all, we still see the SE30 here and um, the same should be vice versa with the SC30 which shows the 2SI. Okay, so this is set up and the next thing, as I said, is to connect the wall adapter from the center. So I do this and you see we have a green light, one green light and there's nothing more happening. If we have a look, um, we still have network zero and 138 not. Sorry. So then we go back to the Ethernet assembly. So still not powered on. I will switch on the power, um, the switch comes to life. Um, I disconnected uh, the access point at the moment and now I will start up the G4. And what you see now is when the G4 comes to life uh, the fourth LAN LED is green now, so uh, Ethernet, Ethernet has power and after a while um, the TX and RX start to flicker, that means um, the center box is now in contact uh, with the Macintosh G4. And now we have a look what happened here. Now it says Apple Talk Network is now available. And we can click, it's the same here, in the SC30. And we click OK, and now it changes to the network 
number already shown, the knots are the same. You can do it here again. Now it's here. And here you see net knot 0 and network same 65456. Six. And what you also see here you can see the Mac G4400, which I named the machine. And here we have to update it, and now here you can see also the G4400. Um, I already made the hard drive uh, accessible to the local talk, and uh, we can connect. Ah, okay. I mistyped it. Okay, and these are the two hard disks from the G400, and I will access the Macintosh. It's the same. Apple Share Prep has to be updated, um, so we have to do the procedure again. Why I don't know, but that's how it works. So. And now it does. And now we you see here we have the HD 400 hard disk from the G4 and we can access it. And now we can try to, this is the local hard disk of the 2SI, and we can try to copy a, a file and see how it works. So it's slow of course, but it seems to do the job. I don't know how large this file is. We will see when it's downloaded. And you have an impression <laughs> how fast this procedure is. But for, I think, for small um, games or something you download from perhaps Macintosh Garden or anything um, with the G4 or a machine. A Windows machine and you put it on the USB stick which the G4 can read so you have the link from the internet from downloading files to uh, a USB accessible machine which links via network to the old 68k Max and um, so if you have an old Macintosh SE or or older which has an only an 800k drive and you don't have any other machine uh, or external SCSI hard drives which you can connect to. Um, this is the only way to get software on there. On there. And I think uh, this is quite working. Probably uh, there are more problems with uh, System 6. And there are some information on the internet about that. Um, but here uh, that worked for me. So let's see information. It's 2.6 megabytes and you see how long it takes to copy 2.6 megabytes via this uh, wiring solution. Okay, then we ha have again um, this is the same. We try the old SE to connect to the G4 400. So, uh, I'm back again. Unfortunately, my battery of the camera was empty and uh, yeah. So, the 
copying back of the file worked also properly and um, yeah that was it for the moment um, I did not have so much problems as described by other people um, there are some who claim that uh, it might be a problem that the Asante um, might not be able to manage uh, different talking speeds on the Ethernet. I don't know if that's right, but I think what is really crucial is the sequence of starting up the devices. Okay, then um, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was not too chaotic. Um, it's for me, also for me, for documentation and perhaps um, you ha do have something if you try this with your own machines and um, you have a, a little bit of documentation. Okay, thank you and bye bye.